My name is Holly Sorkin. I'm the designer behind Ilex Knit Designs and the Zigzag Cowl and Mitten Set. They're a lovely and modern set that really show off your expertise as a knitter. Today I'm going to show you how to work through four techniques and instructions used in the Zigzag Cowl, including cast on using intarsia. You'll notice that the cast on is not only one color, but that the color blocking starts from the beginning of the pattern. This makes for a special cast on instructions that I go over in this tutorial. I'll also cover intarsia in the round and the make provisional loop technique that allow us to complete the intarsia pattern in the round versus flat. Next, I'll go over the right leaning ridge and the left leaning ridge instructions, which give us these beautiful ridges that you see going up the pattern. With these four special techniques and instructions, you'll be able to create the zigzag cowl. Here I have my white main color and my yellow or golden contrast color. In the instructions, the first step is to cast on 64 stitches with the yellow contrast color. I'll use a long tail cast on, but you can use the cast on of your choice. It doesn't make a huge difference. Here I am casting on 64 stitches. It also says to leave a 40 inch tail. This tail is to stitch up the hem inward after you've finished knitting, but it's also optional if you prefer not to have a long tail hanging. Here are my 64 stitches that I cast on with the contrast color. Next, in the instructions, it says to slide them to the right on my needle. So that's all I do. I simply slide the cast onto the right on my needle, and using the exact same needle, I'll cast on 60 stitches with the main color. Again, leaving a long tail if desired. Here I am. Now I have my 60 main color white stitches and 64 contrast color or yellow stitches that I pushed to the side earlier. Here they are for a total of 124 stitches. The next instruction says to turn my work and purl back along the same 60 main color stitches until I come to the color change. So I'll turn my work and I can begin purling back. One thing you'll notice as you're purling back along the main color stitches is that even though the cowl is worked in the round, you're not yet working in the round. The first time the colors are connected is coming up as I finish the main color section, and then the entire cowl will be connected to work in the round after the first provisional loop is tightened in the setup round of the hem. I've come to the last few stitches of my main color, and you can see that the main color and the contrast color are still not connected. The next instruction says to lay the main color yarn that is stopping over the contrast color yarn that will start. Then, as I start purling the contrast color section, the two sections are locked together. So let me show you that again. I'll take the main color, I lay it over the contrast color, and then I pick up the contrast color and I can begin purling. This is how colors are locked together in intarsia knitting, so there are no holes between the colors. Next, I follow the directions and purl 64 with my contrast color. So here I am purling the last few stitches for my contrast color cast on. Now I've finished the cast on section and I have 64 stitches of the contrast color and then 60 stitches of my main color that are just gently attached so far on the edge, but they're not connected yet to work in the round. We're not going to connect it the way we normally would when we're joining work in the round, but instead we'll start the folded hem section. This is what I was mentioning earlier when I said the cowl isn't joined to work in the round until after the first provisional loop is tightened in the section. folded hem setup round. Let's go ahead and start the folded hem setup round. I'll knit 64 with my contrast color all the way up to the color change between the yellow and the gold and the white. I've knit almost all the way from the beginning of my contrast color section to the color change. And if you see that the two colors have come a bit separated, that's okay. Just slide them back together and snug them by gently pulling on the main color yarn. Next, I'll lay the contrast color yarn that's stopping over the main color yarn that I'm starting to lock the colors together as we do in intarsia knitting. Then I simply follow the instruction for the main color that says knit to end. So 
So I'm coming to the end of the instruction that says to knit to the end with my main color. And this is the place where we'll begin to connect the work in the round. The next instruction says to turn and make provisional loop with the contrast color. So first I'll turn my work. Next, I take the contrast color yarn and lay it over the main color working yarn such that it will be caught then when I purl back with the main color. This is the make provisional loop instruction. So let me show you that again. I have my work turned to the wrong side. I have my main color yarn and my contrast color yarn. The instruction says to make provisional loop with contrast color. So I lay the contrast color yarn over the main color yarn so that it creates a slippable loop caught by the first main color purl stitch I make. Again, this is the provisional loop and it allows us to purl back across the main color without having to stop or cut yarn. You can see now that I've purled my first few stitches, I have a nice slippable loop with my, with my contrast color. So then when I arrive at the contrast color section, I can simply pull more yarn as needed to finish that section. And here's the slippable loop. I'm coming to the last couple of main color stitches, finishing up the instruction that said main color purl to color change. And because we're knitting in Tarsha, then I'll take my main color yarn, the yarn that's stopping, the white, and I'll lay the main color yarn over the yarn we're starting, the contrast color. I'll also take a moment here to untangle things a bit so you can see the provisional loop we created earlier and how it will work. It's quite normal in Intarja to untangle your yarns every row or so, so don't lose hope if you have a tangle every now and again. You can see the contrast color yarn is connected where we will purl, as well as back at the previous color change, making this nice slippable loop. Again, we're stopping the main color, so I'll lay that main color yarn over the contrast color, and then follow the instructions to purl with the contrast color to the provisional loop. So every so often as I'm purling across the contrast color section, my yarn might start to get tight or I might not have enough of it. And what I'll do is just gently pull a little bit more through that provisional loop so that I can keep working all the way across to the end of the contrast color section. Here I'm coming to the end of my instruction to purl with the contrast color to the end. Oh, I've come to the last stitch there. I still have my provisional loop, which is connecting these two. And this is where we do the part of the instruction that says gently snug provisional loop. And because this is the first time we're doing it, we also have to make sure, as we would in any project working the round, that our stitches aren't twisted. Because once you snug that provisional loop, what's gonna happen, as you can see here, is we're just gonna gently start to tug it tight. This is the loop that holds our sections together. So I've snugged that loop, I'm making doubly sure that I haven't twisted any stitches. I haven't. Now our work is joined to work in the round. We've completed the setup round for the fold, folded hem, and now we can work on the hem. So we turn, this is gonna be our beginning of the round, right here, and I'll, sh I'll work one round of the folded hem just to show you how it looks and to show you once more what it looks like to create that provisional loop and snug it at the end. So let's start with the folded hem. We're going, it says contrast color, knit to color change. So I'm gonna knit from here all the way to my color change over here. Okay. So here I'm coming up on the color change between the two rounds. Pardon my tails here as I pull those out of the way. And because we're working in Tarja, anytime you come to a color change, you'll lay the yarn you're stopping, in this case my contrast color, over the yarn you're starting to create a nice loop so that the colors are locked together and we don't have a hole in our work. The next instruction says main color, knit to color change. This is the easy part. So I'm gonna knit all the way from here, all the way around 
to the color change where I'm going to make the provisional loop. Okay, I'm coming to the end of the instruction to knit with the main color to the color change. Here you can see it's getting a little bit loose there, but that's okay. As we knit more, it will become more secure as we have more loops connecting it. So I've knit to the color change. So there we are. Knit to the color change. The next instruction says to turn and create the provisional loop with the contrast color. So here I'll move my tails out of the way. I have my main color, working yarn, right here. My main color, working yarn. I'm going to create the provisional loop with my contrast color yarn. So I'm just going to lay this over just like that to create that loop. And then I can start, I've, this is create provisional loop and I can purl back as the next part of the instruction says. You make the provisional loop with the contrast color and then you purl with the main color back to the color change. I have purled back to the color change with my main color. I am stopping my main color, so I will lay that over the yarn I'm starting, which is my contrast color. And per the instructions, I will purl to the color change. I'm purling back to the color change again, where I have my provisional loop. I've made it to the color change. I have my provisional loop. In Intarsia, you'll also have to, from time to time, make sure you don't have any yarn stuck in your provisional loop. And here I definitely have my main color is wrapped inside my provisional loop. So I'll unwrap that before I snug the loop. Now I see that the loop is clear and I can gently snug the provisional loop. Like that. And I've completed the first round one of the, the folded hem. So here you can see the work is definitely connected on both sides, although, you know, rolled up, connected on both sides. And I'll continue to repeat hem round or the round one until it's about one to one and a half inches. Next, I'll do round two, which is the round that gives us the nice uh, pearl ridge that you see here. So this is all hem, this is round one in here that I worked up to this ridge that I created. This is a pearl ridge, which we create in round two. And then after we work round two, then I can show you how to start working the right leaning and left leaning ridges. So from here, you'll work round one until you have the length you desire for the folded hem. You'll work round two once to create this nice ridge. And then I'll show you how to work the right leaning and left leaning ridges. Okay, I have taken the time to repeat my round one to get the length I wanted for the hem to fold up. I've completed round two and created this pearl ridge here. And that means I'm ready to start the cowl. In the cowl directions, you'll see I've taken a moment to write them out in the long way as well as the short way. So for the cowl, the instructions look deceptively easy. It says repeat right leaning ridge eight times, repeat left leaning ridge eight times, repeat that, those two instructions once more, and then one more set of right leaning ridges. But then here I take the time to spell them out in depth because they're rather long instructions. But the techniques we've already learned for making a provisional loop and snugging the provisional loop are the same. So let's start with the right leaning ridge. To begin the right leaning ridge, the first instruction says with the contrast color, slip two from the right needle to the left needle. So I'm going to take one, two. I'm going to do a one, one partial right cross. And what that means is that instead of knitting the stitches like I would in a traditional cable, I'm just going to switch their places. I do this without a cable needle. So I put this here. I'm going to cross this stitch. I'm going to take them both off, put this one behind, 
on this one there. That's a 1-1 one, one partial right cross. I've completed that. I slip one back to my right hand needle and then I knit two together because here I have a main color stitch and a contrast color stitch I'll be knitting those both together and I'm using my contrast color knit two together great so I've completed the one one partial right cross the slip knit one and the knit two together now I'm ready to do my left lifted increase because of this purl ridge the first time around it's a little bit funny but it still works the left of an increase, it means I'll be knitting into the stitch, the left shoulder of the stitch, one, two, below the one I'm working. So I'll pick that up, and I'll knit it. That's the left lifted increase. Right. Next it says to knit nine and do one right cross. So I'll knit nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you like to do your cables with a cable needle, you can. Because it's just a, just a one one, I actually don't use a cable needle for these. What I do is I slip it into the front, I slide two off, I pick up the one that came off from behind, and I slip this first one back on, and I knit two. That's my one one right cross. Once more with feeling. I'm gonna knit nine. I'll ins I'm ready to do my one one right cross, so I'll insert my right hand needle into the second stitch in the front. I'll slide the first and second stitch off. I'll take my left hand needle from behind and go back into that first stitch. I'll change the order of the stitches so the second becomes the first, and I'll put it back on the needle. That's the right cross without a cable needle. The rest of the instruction says to knit until I'm two stitches before the color change. So I'm nearly there. Here I am two stitches before the color change, one, two. It says to do a one, one partial right cross. And again, this is where I cross the stitches, but I don't actually knit them. So this is a lot like what I was doing a moment ago with my right cross or my right twist, except I won't be knitting them. So I insert into the second stitch, pull both off. From behind, I take the first. I switch the order of the stitches and the second stitch becomes the first. So that's my partial right cross, and then I knit one. Next, it says to switch to the main color, and because this is intarsia, I'll lay my working color yarn over, that I'm ending over the working yarn that I'm starting. The first instruction for main color says knit two together. So I'll knit this stitch and the white stitch, the main color stitch, together. Perfect. And then I do another left lifted increase. So one, two, and again, because this is the purl row, it's a little bit wonky, but it's doable. So that's my left lifted increase. There we are. And then I knit to the color change. Here I am knitting back to the color change with my main color. And you'll notice, remember at the very beginning of this right leaning ridge, where the first thing we did in the instructions was slip two from the right hand needle to the left hand needle. We switched their order and we left one on there. So when we knit two together, we knit two, the white one and the yellow one together. And so this is that very first stitch that we slipped from the beginning of the round, and here we're knitting it. It's a little bit tighter because it was slipped, but this is gonna make sure that we have a nice ridge that flows all the way up. So there, we've knit to the color change, and from here, for the rest of this instruction, it's very similar to what we've been doing already. We turn. Here I have my working yarn. We make a provisional loop with the contrast color. Here's my contrast color and we purl back to the beginning. So I'll purl all the way back with the white, all the way back with the white, 
to here. I'll pick up my yellow, I'll pull it all the way back, I'll tighten the provisional loop, and that will be a full, one full instruction of the right leaning ridge. The second half of the right leaning ridge instructions is very similar to what we were doing previously. The only tricky part is at the beginning where we're creating those first couple of ridges. So I'll pearl back to the beginning and then I'll show you once more how to create those right leaning ridges. Here I am almost back at the beginning. I have purled all the way back. I made sure to lay my main color that I was stopping over my contrast color that I was starting way over here to create that nice loop. I'm getting back to my provisional loop that I made. I'm gonna purl my last stitch because it says to purl to the provisional loop. So I've purled to the provisional loop. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any yarn caught in there, which I do. I have this nice main color chunk caught in there. So I'll untangle these. Great, and now there's no yarn caught, so I can gently snug my provisional loop. That's my favorite part. And I finished that round. So let's do this once more. I'll show you again the right leaning ridge. You see here you can see we've got our first right leaning ridge round done. First step of the right leaning ridge, it says to slip two from the right hand needle to the left hand needle. Great. Next, we'll do a 1-1 one, one partial right cross. Again, that's where we switch the order of the second and the first stitch, but we don't knit them. So I'm switching the order. Great, done. And then it says to slip one. I'll do that. This is that lonely stitch that we knit when we came all the way back around with our main color. And then the next step says to knit two together. So we knit this, these two together, one main color and one contrast color. There's the knit two together. And then we do the left lifted increase. So one, two down from there. Here's that left shoulder. And I knit it. Perfect. Next, we knit nine and we do a one, one right cross. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a one one right cross. So I slip my needle in to the second stitch through the front. I take both off. I pick up that first stitch from behind with my left needle. They switch places and the second stitch becomes the first. And then I knit them. That's the right cross. So you can see it's starting to come together. You might wonder why I have you do all of the, um, you know, the slip to, the partial right cross, slip one back, knit two together with two different colors here at this ridge. That's because what we want to have at the end of the day is this nice line that isn't just a, a contrast color ridge, but we wanna have both of these. So you'll see the main color has a nice uh, right, right leaning ridge as well as the contrast color. So while it's a little bit more complicated to do it that way, I feel like this is a much more beautiful um, finished project. So now that I've shown you how to do the right leaning ridge, I will finish up that row, we'll come back, and I'll show you how to do a left leaning ridge. Okay, I've completed two repeats of the right leaning ridge instruction. Here you see that has made four rows, or four rounds, one, two, three, four, because every time you complete an intarsia round, it actually creates two rounds. So in your pattern, you'll repeat the right leaning ridge eight times to create 16 rows. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just gonna do two and then we'll move on to the left leaning ridge so you can see what that looks like. So the left leaning ridge starts out with a one one partial left cross. And it's just the opposite of a partial right cross where we're gonna switch the order of these two stitches with this one going in front of that. So I take my right hand needle behind the first stitch into the second. I slide both off. I come in front with my left needle, pick up that dangling stitch. They switch places. The second stitch becomes the first and the old first stitch is now the second and it's crossed in front of the first stitch. So that's one, one partial left cross. I slip one, 
per the instructions, and I knit one. Next, I knit nine. And then I do a left cross. So this is just like the partial left cross, except instead of not knitting them, I'll knit them. So I slip my right hand needle into the second stitch from behind. I slip both stitches off. I take the left hand needle in front and pick up that dangling stitch. I cross to the left. I make the old second stitch the new first stitch. And then I knit them both separately. Let's do that again. I'll knit nine. And then I do a left cross. So this is just like the partial left cross, except instead of not knitting them, I'll knit them. So I slip my right hand needle into the second stitch from behind. I slip both stitches off. I take the left hand needle in front and pick up that dangling stitch. I cross to the left. I make the old second stitch the new first stitch, and then I knit them both separately. One, two. Okay, I'm just finishing up that fifth one, one left cross, left cable, and now it says to knit to one stitch before the color change. So here we are, knitting to one stitch before the color change. Perfect. I'm going to make one right. I'm going to slip one. I'm going to do a partial left cross where I switched the order of these two. I'm going to knit one. I'm going to pass the slip stitch over. There we go. And now with my main color, I'll knit to one stitch before the color change. Before I do that, I want to show you. Again, this might seem like a really futzy way to do it, but this is guaranteeing that we get that nice double left leaning ridge for both the white and the gold. If we did it with just a left cross, we wouldn't get the, um, the white ridge as well, which is what we want. So here I am, I'll knit to one stitch before the color change. Okay, I am nearly to one stitch before the color change. Here we are, one stitch before the color change. I will make one right. Make one right, slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over. There we go. So this is what's guaranteeing we're going to get that nice two left leaning. There we go. Now I turn, I make my provisional loop with my contrast color, just like we've been doing all along. And I'll purl all the way back to the color change. All the way back to the color change, I'll purl all the way back again. I'll snug my provisional loop, and then we'll be right back where we started, ready to work another left-leaning ridge. Mm -hmm. 